Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and today I'm checking out a standalone program or application here called Extract Stems. Now, according to their website, what this is supposed to do is it allows you to input and upload one song and get four stems out of it. So vocals, drums, bass, and other, which usually ends up being like guitars and synthesizers and things like that. This video is not sponsored in any way. I didn't get this for free. I bought it myself, although you can get a free trial. Um, I think the full version is like 60 bucks or something like that. Um, I bought this because being able to do this with audio is sort of like a holy grail situation for me. And it's I'll be honest, I'll say this right up front. It's not quite uh, perfect yet. There's some things that Extract Stems does really well and other things that it doesn't quite do so well. But in terms of, of being able to separate elements out of a finished mix, it works the best, it works better than anything I've ever used. If there's something better that you've had better luck with, let me know in the comments below and I'll check it out. So uh, let me just drop in a song here. One thing that I don't like about this is that it's all like cloud-based or it's like, in internet based. So when you drag a song in, it's actually uploading that song to their processing server and then sending back the stems. So that process takes a while. And if you don't have internet, well, it just won't work. So right out of the box, I really don't like that element of it. Um, I'd rather the program itself do the processing uh, itself. So you don't have to be um, on the internet for this to work. Okay. So it looks like it's, uh, finished the, the process here. And you can see it's separated the vocals, the drums, the bass, and other. I'm gonna try not to play too much of these songs uh, in their original version because I, I know I'm gonna get flagged for copyright here. But uh, let's let's play a little bit of the song by itself and then I'll, uh, I'll just solo out some of these different channels, these different stems. <laughs> What I think you can take it. So this is sort of like a alternative country tune. Um, what I found in my experience with extract stems is that it doesn't do a very good job of isolating any individual instrument, but what it does do a good job of is creating um, a karaoke versions of songs where you don't want the vocal in. And the reason why um, individual channels will sound worse than anything else is the spectral content from each of the instruments is blended bet between the channels here. So the drums, bass, and other uh, stems still do contain a bit of vocal material, but also the vocal track contains material from the others. So when you play multiple channels together, it'll inherently sound better than trying to just solo uh, one of the channels. I wouldn't say that this was like good enough um, to have like an acapella, like if you're trying to make a remix of a song. Hit the fan and I ain't got a plan, but I always have money for my wine. And the quality of the individual stems, if you solo them out, is going to vary from song to song. It's going to depend on how the song was recorded, the instrumentation, how it was mastered, whether it's an older song, a newer song. I find a lot with, uh, no, with newer mixes that um, engineers, including myself, tend to use more effects that spread everything everywhere, you know, where you have these modulation effects and big reverbs and things like that, um, which can uh, make it difficult to, to isolate some of these elements. But some older songs, um, it actually works pretty pretty good with uh, where the, the production is a, a bit simpler. However, if I wanted to sol or mute the vocals and create a karaoke version, that's totally doable. Or maybe I want to practice bass to this. Maybe I'm a new... Uh, new bass player in the band and replacing the old bass player and I want to practice along without the bass, that'll probably work. But I gotta be tough, cause he always gets better all the time. Or maybe without the guitar.
Now, when you click on one of these other separation options, it'll do another analysis and it'll download a, you know, like a separate version. Um, and what I found is it does analyze it in a different way. Like if you do want a decent sounding acapella um, or a better sounding backing track, you're better off using one of these two options rather than the four stem option. But let's check out a different song here. This is Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath. Uh, this is during the Dio era. Um, and I actually am working with a band right now that's doing a, a cover video of this. And so we recorded the drummer first. And uh, what I did was mute the, uh, I muted the drums from the original track and then stuck her drum track in there. And uh, it worked out great, you know. So again, it works better when you, you know, maybe mute one or two elements rather than soloing an element. But let's give this a listen here right where the vocals come in. That's not too bad. There's some artifacting on the, the reverb. Uh, but one thing you can do is you can turn on this de-bleed option and you can adjust the de-bleed strength. So if you want to hear less of the de-bleed, you can pull this down, which will generally result in a better sounding track, but it will allow other instruments into that track. The devil is never a maker. The less that you give. You're a taker. So it's on and on and on. It's heaven and hell. Oh, well. And then again, if I just mute the drums. Yeah, if you were doing a drum cover, a bass cover, or a guitar cover for this song, it would be totally doable to just mute that track and then play along with it, or mute the vocals and create a karaoke version. Okay, so next, let's go through some of these different separation options here. Now, when you click on each of these, it's going to reanalyze um, and re-download uh, different stems for these. So they are treated differently. I believe like if you use the acapella option or the acapella separation, it pays more attention to the vocals and then just kind of puts everything else, everything else all in one stem to better, you know, keep all of the spectral information from the vocals. So let's go through these real quick. And, and by the way, I clicked on each one of these and it took about a little over two minutes for each one. So it was about eight or 10 minutes extra to do all four of these, in addition to the four stem version. So acapella gives you vocals and other, so basically vocals and everything else. Backing gives you uh, everything uh, plus other. So backing's technically like your best option. So backing's technically your best option if you're trying to create like a uh, karaoke version. Acapella is your best option if you're trying to just get the vocals. Drums separates the drums from everything else. And then uh, bass separates the bass from everything else. So what I want to do is I'm going to turn off the de-bleed option on all of these. And I want to see, um, at first, I want to see four stem, acapella, and backing. I want to see which one gives us the best sounding soloed vocal. So here's uh, four stem. Sing me a song. You're a singer. Here's a cappella. Sing me a song. You're a singer. And here's backing. Sing me a song. You're a singer. So you can hear in that version, because the vocals here are just called other, some other materials sort of bled into the vocals. But I've actually found, and I, I've tested this with a few different songs, I've actually found that using the backing mode will sometimes give you a better quality solo vocal if you're intentionally trying to lift a vocal out of a song. So maybe you can create a remix of it or, you know, create a vocal sample or something like that. Do me a wrong, you're a bringer of evil. The devil is never a maker. The 
best that you give, you're a taker. So it's on and on and on. Yeah, there's some artifacting in there. It's not, you know, too great. Let's go back to acapella here. Do me a wrong. You're a bringer of evil. The devil is never a maker. The less that you give. That's not too bad either. Um, in the thing is, it sounds like it's like a really low quality MP3 file or something. So. If you need more clarity and more top end, maybe use the backing, uh, the backing separation. If you're trying to separate the vocal and you're going to add another effect to it to disguise the artifacting anyway, maybe use the acapella uh, version. Let's go to uh, drums here. Let's see what the drums sound like here. Yeah, definitely getting some guitar in the uh, in the drums there. But you could also just maybe pull everything else down if you want to just uh, create sort of like a, a drum-centric mix to study the drum part. You know what? There might be synthesizer in there, too. I'm not sure if synthesizer is actually in that part of the song or not. And again, just muting the drums. This is what I did for uh, the band for the drummer so she could play to this as a backing track. The closer you get. That's really good, like being able to remove the drums and still have decent sounding vocals, bass, and guitar. Uh, that actually turned out really well. So again, here's what I did with this drummer. I had her track to the song with the drums in. And then what I did was I mixed her drums and edited her drums and pulled out the drum track from the original. And so now you get this sort of drum cover version. If you're trying to be the next Madel Cohen or something or create your own like cover channel where you do drum covers, bass covers, guitar covers, vocal covers, this is a really easy way to do it without having to go back in and re-record all of the parts. You just mute the part in the song that you're going to play and, you know, film yourself doing it, do a rough mix and there you go. Now, one last thing I'll show you that's pretty cool that you can do with this is, let's say you've got some old recordings that you did a long time ago. You don't have the multi-track sessions anymore, but you kind of want to remix and remaster them and rebalance things. I certainly have many recordings that I did back when I was a teenager that were mixed horribly, recorded horribly, and if I just had the multi-track stems, it would be uh, easy for me to sort of fix and correct those recordings and maybe re-release them. But here's, you know, here's a song where each of the individual stems don't necessarily sound great. Why do we always have to sing? We always... I can't... Now you can rebalance the volume of each one here, or what you can do is click here to export these stems. So I'm going to export five stems, the, the full mix, that's the, basically the original mix, and then the vocals, drums, bass, and other. So now in my DAW, I've imported those exported stems along with the original mix, and you could use these to rebalance the song and even add new effects on each of the stems. So there's a lot of different uses for extract stems, but like I said before, the ability to completely isolate instruments from a single audio file is like the holy grail of audio to me. I have a bunch of old recordings that I made from like 15 years ago that I no longer have the multi-tracks for, and I'd pay just about any amount of money to be able to split them up and remix them. Extracts gets pretty close, um, but it's definitely not perfect, and it's definitely not good enough for me to try to actually, you know, professionally remix these old recordings. 
so I think like your real, you know, useful use cases here are creating acapellas, creating karaoke versions of songs, and isolating elements of songs so you can sample um, other recordings. Again, if you guys have used something else that does a better job, please let me know in the comments below. I'll check it out and maybe do a review on it. Um, and if you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thanks for the support and thanks for watching.